this backdrop, this standby agreement with the IMF, it's a good news, a good signal. What does it signal to the world about bringing funds to Egypt? Well, uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, at the outset, I would like to say that um, it's not just uh, that we are focusing on uh, the immediate impacts of COVID, but we're actually looking forward. And that is very important because countries uh, uh, post-COVID are going to be distinguished by how much effort they put uh, in trying to implement structural reforms uh, that help uh, put the economy uh, on a path for uh, more employment uh, and more inclusive growth. So this is something that we have uh, been able to do uh, pre-COVID. Uh, we had concluded the reform, a very successful reform program by uh, summer of 2019. And that has allowed us to enter uh, into this crisis uh, with a, a very good fiscal as well as foreign exchange position. Um, and uh, the government uh, during the crisis has taken uh, very important steps uh, and policies, both on the monetary side, the fiscal side, but also more importantly, uh, when it comes to structural reforms related to uh, widening the social safety net, mitigating the impact uh, on informal uh, employment, uh, creating um, uh, also uh, women-specific uh, policies related to COVID. So there's so much that has happened. And what we want to do going forward is build on that uh, in order to uh, uh, help not just rebuild the economy, but really reshape it. Mm -hmm. Minister, you say you want to build on that. So let's flesh this out a bit more in terms of the kinds of targets you've set yourself for this year and beyond. Have you been able to secure some of the finance? I mean, we know that you have been able to do that. Uh, what else is in the pipeline in terms of that financing? So it's, uh, you know, I, I, I used to work in the IMF before, and uh, something that is very important, and I'm sure that uh, all of you cover, uh, any, uh, any IMF uh, program has to be fully financed. Uh, and that's where uh, other multilateral and bilateral um, uh, partners of development come in. Uh, in the case uh, of uh, other uh, finances, and that is uh, whether we're talking about the African Development Bank, we're talking about uh, JICA, the French, uh, the World Bank, uh, et cetera, uh, what we have been working on uh, in the Ministry of International Cooperation is to make sure that uh, the sustainable development goals are not overlooked in the midst of all of this. So you will find uh, that uh, we have created a multi-donor platform uh, for very specific uh, sectors that will help actually push uh, the economy forward. That includes uh, electricity, transportation, the health sector, uh, given uh, you know, the focus uh, globally now on that and also nationally. Uh, we also have uh, not only uh, uh, help or, or support to the uh, sovereign, but also uh, to the private sector through credit lines uh, to Egyptian banks that are availed uh, through the EBRD and the EIB. So it's really a, a multi-dimensional and a multi-sectoral uh, effort uh, to create uh, a, a sort of a more impetus into sectors which are going to help the economy. So for instance, when I talk about um, electricity, uh, Egypt has just uh, received uh, two awards from EBRD, one uh, in terms of sustainable energy, the other one in terms of uh, gender. Uh, when we come to solar and renewable, uh, Egypt is the number one in the Middle East. So we want to build uh, on this. And that's why uh, in the uh, multi-donor uh, platform, uh, the energy strategy for 2035 uh, is being pushed. Uh, these are very good opportunities uh, where private-public partnerships can take place. Uh, similarly, for transport, so when we are talking about expanding uh, the um, uh, metro lines, uh, more connectivity, uh, all of this is quite important for investments going forward. Uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, support to the private sector, it's not just the big companies, but also the small and medium enterprises, which are really going to be the engines of growth going forward, particularly uh, given uh, the uh, global shock that we've seen. Minister. Minister, we, we need to push you a little bit in terms of the timing. When will you have these funds on the books? And let's press you a little bit. How confident are you that you will get all the money that we just listed in, in terms of the multilateral agencies? When, Minister, and how much? You know, it's, uh, it's very important to mention uh, that uh, Egypt has a, a very successful record with all our multilateral and bilater bilateral development partners. 
um, uh, we have been able to, uh, uh, you know, push through uh, with uh, lots of programs and projects with them. Uh, and uh, these, uh, we have already uh, board dates set up with many of the uh, items that you put on your screen. Uh, this is happening very soon. Uh, and uh, uh, you will see in the press uh, that uh, they, they have been uh, secured. Uh, the other thing which is important, I want to uh, use this opportunity to mention it, uh, we have created a new global partnerships narrative, which is people, projects, uh, and purpose. And the idea here is that each and every project and each and every development partner that we just talked about comes under this umbrella. Uh, how many beneficiaries uh, are going to uh, be affected? Uh, what is the type of the project? Is it a PPP project? Is it, is it uh, the nature mm -hmm. of its financing? And then third purpose, which SDG does it, uh, does it uh, really uh, meet? Uh, all of these that were on your screen have been uh, uh, secured. We're in the final stages uh, of finalizing it, and actually we right. have board dates uh, for many of them already. Minister, Egypt's uh, net foreign yeah. currency reserves came through overnight, and it's near the lowest level now in three years. The Egyptian pound has been on a losing streak as well. To what extent is that a concern for you, and uh, how much does it... Uh, you know, how, far, how highly does it rank on your priority list at the moment of things to do? I mean, I think, uh, I think for international reserves and, and foreign exchange, that is, that is a discussion you can have with the central bank. Uh, nonetheless, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Egypt is a country uh, that has tremendous uh, potential. Uh, our uh, reform story uh, has spoken uh, very well about the commitment of the government in the past. Uh, and uh, we are not uh, new uh, to uh, shocks. We always have shown resilience. And I believe that, uh, uh, you know, given our commitment to structural reforms, what we call the second wave of reforms, uh, and these reforms focus on enabling, uh, creating an enabling environment for the private sector, increasing productivity, uh, creating more inclusion and focusing uh, on sectors of priority. All of this is going to speak uh, for itself going forward. Uh, we have not been uh, only, uh, you know, sidetracked by COVID, but we have been looking really uh, into details uh, of how to create more jobs, create a more inclusive economy. Uh, and that, that is going to be uh, very, very uh, important to investors and for everyone who's following the Egypt story.